The house of God is a house of help. The house of God is a place where you come and your life is touched. It's a place where your character is molded. It's a place where you receive shield. It's a place where you come to be refreshed. Come to be renewed. It's a place where you come to receive deliverance. It's a place where you come and everything that God has sent you to be, you'll be helped to become that. It's a place where you come to experience God. That's why it is said, upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and God's people shall possess their possession. So lift up your voice and tell the Lord, I have come to take my portion. I have come to receive my possession. I have come to be blessed. I have come to be healed. I have come to be attended to. I have come to be ministered to. I have come to be refreshed. You cannot afford to go here dry. The house of God is a place where you come and you will flourish. Those who are planted in the house of God, they shall flourish. It is the plan of God to make your life flourish. It is the plan of God to make you experience flourishing in everything. The house of God is where you come, you experience flourishing in your bone, flourishing in your business, flourishing in your body, flourishing in your marriage, everything about you get flourished. The reason is because the Spirit of God is in the house of God. And the word of God is the waters of life is in the house of God. So lift up your voice and tell God, I cannot live here the same. I cannot live here with my pain. I cannot live here with my discouragement. The house of God is where you come and you are mad. You come into God's house mad and you are mad. You come into the house of God scattered and you are gathered. You come into your, the house of God confused and the right direction is given to you. That is the house of God. That is the reason for worship. It is a house of benefit. It is a place where you come and your losses will be turned to benefits. Your voice and tell God, I'm here for you. I'm here that you make me. I'm here that you mold my life. It is a place where the wounded are healed. It is a place where those who are crying, they come, their tears are wiped away from their eyes. It is a place where the sick come and they are healed. It is a place where the weak come and they are strengthened. It is not a place where you come and you are hurt. Not a place where you come and you are wounded. The house of God is a place of healing. The, place of, the house of God is a place of deliverance. It's a place where you come and you receive covering. Receive a protection. It's a place where you come and you are prepared for the next battle. It's a place where you come and you receive before you go out to business and to other places to see them manifest. It's a place where you come and the Spirit of God builds in the blessings of God. And then and you go out from the house of God manifested. And things begin to work out for you. Blessed Father, we thank you. We're here. We are here to be refreshed. We are here to be renewed. The word is here. Your spirit is here. So let the spirit of God and the word of God bring refreshing, bring renewal, bring restoration, bring joy, bring happiness, bring fulfillment, bring righteousness in our lives. We thank you, our Father, for answering us. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Thank you, our Father, God in heaven. Because we have come to your house and we've come to be refreshed, we've come to be restored. And I can sense the oppression of your spirit, I can sense the walking and the flow of the waters of life. And as the water begins to flow, Lord, I pray that every person here shall be watered. And refreshing will follow every person. For those who were opportune to testify, Lord, I pray that. Their testimony is permanent. No power can reverse or cause them to lose 
the miracle they received in Jesus' name. Those of them that testify about God's protection and deliverance, Lord, I decree that there shall be no such occurrence in their lives in Jesus' name. For those who are not privileged to testify, Lord, I decree that they will get added testimony at when they will have chance to come and testify in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray for those who are in this church and those things that the word of God says should not be named among the saints are now found in their lives. I pray that from today, as they listen to the word of God, they will take those things out of their lives, never to be mentioned, never to be associated with them anymore. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for those who are being bewitched. Is there any person that is going through bewitchment? Is there any person that is going through pollution of the devil? I decree this morning, great Father in glory, that the bewitchment will come to an end and the pollution will come to an end. In the name of Jesus Christ, is there any person that the devil has uh, sent anything or prepared any evil weapon against them? Right now I command that those weapons will return to the sender. It shall not prosper in the lives of your people. In the name of Jesus Christ, God Almighty, I pray that all the blessings you have packaged for us this week, those things that eyes have not seen, ear has not heard, neither have they entered into the mind of men, those things that are freely given to us. Lord, I decree and declare that this week we shall receive those things freely given to us. In the name of Jesus Christ, as we receive them this morning in this church service, they will start manifesting as we move out from this church, as we interact with people, as we go about our business this week, there shall be a manifestation of what we have received this day in Jesus' name. Thank you, Almighty Father. Lord, I pray that the Father, that the fire that has been kindled upon our lives, that the flame will continue burning and continue burning in our lives. Thank you, Almighty Father. As we sit down or as we sing uh, songs, Lord, before we enter into the Sunday light, I ask that the Spirit of the living God, through the songs we bring order in our lives and bring direction in our lives, Thank you once again for answer to prayers. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Now you turn, turn with me to him, number 54, just as God who reigns on high. Spent to men uh, in days gone by, so the Lord is still calling men today. And my brother, this is true. Uh, whatever he says to you, there is uh, but one thing to do, just obey. If you are in the Savior's side, you must do as he commands. But there is no other gospel way. Never put the message by. Never stop to reason why. When the Savior speaks to you, just obey. If a man shall fail your sign in the land beyond the sky, after time with you have passed away, uh, though the way you may not see, Christ is calling, follow me. Faith and duty both we cry, just obey. Just obey, just obey. Is the way, God's way. When his message comes to you, there is but one thing to do. Just obey. Remember that this 2019 our mantra, our watchword, our slogan is uh, I will obey. I will trust. I will do what you want me to do. As God who reigns on high, spared to men in days gone by. So the Lord is calling men to death. And my brother, this is true. Whatever he says to you, there is but one thing to do just obey. Just obey. And just obey. Is the way God's way when this message comes to you? There is but one thing to do just obey, just obey. 
If you are in the Savior's side, you must do as he commands. For there is no other God spoke away. Never put the message by, never stop the reason why. When the Savior speaks to you, just obey. Just obey. Just obey. Is the way. God's way. When His message comes to you, there is but one thing to do. Just obey. Just obey. If a man shall fail your sight in the land beyond the sky, after time which you has passed away, though the way you may not see, Christ is calling, follow me. Faith and duty both we cry, just obey, just obey, just obey. Is the way God's way when his message comes to you, there is but one thing to do just obey, just obey. Last song 202. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. A shabby season's refreshing sent from the Savior above. A shabby showers of blessing, precious reviving again over the hills and the valleys, sound of abundance of rain. A showers of blessing, send them upon us, O Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing. Come now and honor your word. A shabby showers of blessing, O that today they might fall. Now, as to God, we are confessing. Now, as on Jesus we call, there shall be showers of blessing if we but trust and obey. There shall be seasons refreshing if we let God have his way. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers. Showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing. Then from the Savior above. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are for. All in, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, precious reviving again. Over the hills and the valleys, sound of abundance of rain. Showers of blessing. Shower some blessings we need. Mercy drops around us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing. Send them upon us, O Lord. Grant to us now refreshing. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, oh that today they might fall. Now as to God we are confessing. Now as on Jesus we call, 
was a blessing. Jah was a blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing if we both trust and obey. There shall be season refreshing if we let God have His way. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we she drops round us up falling, but for the showers we please. Lift up your voice and tell the Lord that you need showers of blessing. It's no longer going to be dry season. It's going to be season refreshing but then you are going to trust and you are going to obey and that you will let him have his way that's the bottom line lord we thank you we glorify your name because the promise is real bless it because the promise is from god that cannot fail we bless it because the promise is from god that is faithful we bless you because the promise of shower is from God that can be trusted and is dependable. And so this morning, God Almighty, as we promise to trust and to obey and to allow you to have your way, we shall enter showers. We shall experience refreshing. We shall experience precious reviving. There shall be abundance of blessing. There shall be honoring of your word in our lives we thank you our father we glorify your name now lord i am asking let your hand be upon your people let your face be turned towards your people let your showers begin to release upon your people my father that they may experience refreshing in their lives so that this bad season this dry season that have lasted and as is overdue shall become things of the past in their lives we give you glory. We give you honor. Have your way now. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Let the church say amen. amen. You may be seated. And I want every person to be seated. Or shall you take your seat. Or shall at my back. You can sit here. There's all shall at my back. You can sit here. Everybody, I want you to be seated. Interpreters, I want you to pay attention. In the course of trying to interpret to others, please make sure you are taking in what you are interpreting. Every person should pay attention. Those of you that are by my left hand, that usually after ministering you go to sleep, can you come to this side? I want you to move to this side. Move this way. And then these people move this way. The people sitting here move this way. It, let that be done quickly. This morning, I am talking on a message that is gotten from the last tense statement of uh, the last stanza of Song 202. Let's take that Song 202. Let's look at uh, the last stanza. The last stanza uh, says, There shall be showers of blessing, and I believe it. I believe it that there shall be showers of blessing. And this is God's given by law. Nobody forced him, nobody coerced him into making it. He has the ability, he has the resources. Let me confirm from God's word that. There is such a promise in the Bible concerning a period that there will be showers of blessing. And this should be that period in your life. I want you to understand that the things that God do 
or does, whenever you see God walking or bringing a promise to be fulfilled in a person's life, it is when the person starts believing the promise. When a promise of God is believed, that is when the season of its fulfillment begins in your life. God will always bring whatever good season you desire in your life, but it depends on you. When you begin to believe what he said, that is when that season begins in your life. In Ezekiel 34, and let us read uh, Ezekiel 34, and let's read from verse 25. And I will make with them a covenant of peace. I will cause the evil beast to seize out of the land. They shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. I will cause the showers to come down in a season. There shall be showers of blessing. And the tree of the field shall eat her fruit. The earth shall eat her increase. And there that and they shall be saved in their land and shall know that I am the Lord when I have broken the bands of their yoke and delivered them out of the hand of those that serve themselves of uh, them. So there is the promise of God. Let me confirm to you that every promise of God is made under an oath, made under a covenant a binding agreement in chapter 6 of let us read verse 12 that you be not slothful but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises take note of patience take note of faith as uh, as uh, vessels to inheriting promises of God but when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself. Saying, surely, a blessing, I will bless thee. Multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath of, for confirmation is to confirm an end of all strife. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the house of promise. The immutable immutability of the, his counsel confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things which, in which it was impossible for God to lie we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. Two immutable things are the word of the oath and the, the covenant itself. And so, the every promise of God, including this one that talks about showers of blessing, is made under an oath and the covenant sealed by God Almighty. Now, the songwriter say, there shall be showers of blessing if we trust and obey. That's the number one condition. Number one condition is trusting. Number two condition is obeying. Then the number three condition. He said there shall be seasons refreshing. Number three condition. If we let God have his way. And this morning we are discussing on letting God to have his way. That's what we'll be discussing briefly. And we are going to look into the word of God to show a few people that allowed God to have his way in their lives. And we will show what uh, it means to allow God to have his way. And we will show what you get when you allow God to have his way. And we will show what will be the faith of a person who resists, who will refuse God to have his way, where God is demanding to have his way. And 
I want to pledge to us again that by God's grace, we are going to labor in the word of God to ensure that you are fed with the knowledge of God, you are fed with understanding, you are fed with the truth. The last words of Christ to Peter is, feed my lamb. Was it, what, what is it going to feed them with? Truth. Feed them with the truth, knowledge, and understanding. It is when they are properly fed that they can succeed. So, I am pledging that by God's grace, we are going to feed you food that showed us what understanding is. 22 of Proverbs chapter 16. Proverbs chapter 16 and the verse number 22. Understanding is a well spring of life unto him that had it. But instruction of fools is folly. It's not everybody that had understanding. But anyone that has understanding, the word of God says that it's a well spring of life. That's why we, we feed you with knowledge and understanding. Now the songwriter says, there shall be showers of blessing. If we allow God to have his way, he showed a number of things we will experience. He said there will be showers of blessing, seasons refreshing, pressures reviving, abundance of rain, and God honoring his word in our lives. When God begins to honor his word in your, in your life, you are on top. When God begins to honor his promises in your life because he considers you fit to listen to you, to grant your request, that is all we need. I want to know that what you need to live a victorious life, what you need to become what God wants you to be, what you need to fulfill, what God wants you to fulfill in this 2019 is for God to honor his word in your life. For God to honor his promises in your life. God is ever ready to honor his word and to honor his promises, but you need to qualify for it. And this songwriter brought out three critical issues. Three critical issues he mentioned that are at the center of these things happening. Number one, we are to trust. Number two, we are to bear. And then number three, letting God to have his way. That is, these are at the same life, control your life, tell you what to do and what not to do, tell you how to live your life, tell you how to dress and how not to dress, tell you how to talk and how not to talk. You must allow him to, to, to dictate for your life. He should be a dictator dictating for you what you should do in your own interest. In Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18. Come now and let's reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you be willing and obedient, what will happen? You shall eat the good of the land. For if you refuse and rebel, what will happen? It shall be devoured with the sword. But the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Now listen and look up. There are blessings of God on ground for you to key into, for you to draw from. And there is also a devourer on ground that is waiting the disobedient, that is waiting the rebellious. And once he sees rebellion in your life, you will go into work. Once he sees disobedient to any word of God in your life, he goes into oppression. Isaiah chapter 65. Let me further show you that God wants you to serve him in happiness. God wants you to serve him in joy. Serving God is not a sentence to death. Serving God is not a sentence to suffering. Serving God is not a sentence to becoming nothing. Serving God does not make you to lose your purpose of life. Serving God brings you into fulfillment of God's purpose for your life. Serving God is not the worst thing that will happen to you. Rather, it is the best thing that can happen to you that you are now serving him. Isaiah chapter 65. Isaiah 65. And let's read verse 20. 
There shall be no more dancing front of days, nor an old man that had not fulfilled his days, but the child shall die hundred years old, but a child shall die and day they were sinners. But the sinner being a hundred years old shall be a cause. And they shall build houses and what? Inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. Take note, there are trees that have lasted hundreds of years. And God said, at the days of trees are what? The days of my people. And then he made that statement, and my elect, those who have given their lives to me, who have decided that I will tell them what to do and what not to do, shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offsprings with them. These are promises of God made to us in love. In 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 17. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 17. Six seventeen. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God. Now look at the next statement. Who, what does this living God do? Who gives us richly? How many things? We are not looking at the Bible. What does this living God do? He gives us all things to what? Enjoy. If you don't know it, you will not have it. What you don't know, you don't know it. God gives us good things richly to what? Enjoy. And once you become a child of God and understand what has happened, your life will change, everything about you will change, your mental faculties will change, your state of mind will change, and when these changes occur in your life, you are on your way to the top. You are on your way to fulfillment. Now listen to me. One of the presidents, that uh, former presidents, uh, between 1999 and I think 2008 or thereabout, or seven, I adopted a young man from Aquaibon, a little boy from Aquaibon. That boy was to perish before he was adopted by the president. Now, if you see this boy now, you will now see, you will see the, the work of presidency in his life. He was a pauper. He was taken from nowhere. He was a boy ready to die before he was adopted by the presi former president. And now he's a boy attending the best of the university. And uh, eating the best of the food because the the his uh, paternity had what has changed, and the change that change brought about change that affected every of area of his life. So serving God is not the worst thing that has happened to you; rather, it is the best thing. The reason why it looks like it's been the worst is because you are without knowledge; you have not understood what happened. And that is why we will serve you with knowledge of God. Now, when one allows God to have his way, God will allow that individual also to have his way. That's the character of God. If you are struggling with God, he will be struggling with you. If God is not struggling with you in any area of your life, he will make struggle to cease in every area of your life. That is the way of God. 
said to the Eli and his household, You have despised me, and I will despise you. For he that honoreth me, I will honor. That is God for you. Samuel honored God. He was brought up in the midst of people dishonoring God. He was brought up in the midst of family that had no regard for righteous things. Had no regard for sacred things. But the little his mother taught him, he held unto it tenaciously. He grew with teach, and that was why God honored him, and he became a great man. But this man that had his children that were dishonoring God, God ended up giving them what they gave him. That's the way of God. If you give him whatever is what he will give you back. If you relate with him goodly, he will relate with you goodly. If you if you love him, he pays you back. And so, in the list of those who allow God to have their way, we have Abraham. We have what? Abraham. In Genesis chapter 12, Genesis chapter 12, let's read verse 1. Genesis 12 verse 1. Verse 1. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of your country and from your kindred and from your father's house unto a land that I will show thee. I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee, make your name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lord went with him, and Abraham was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. Now God made a demand of Abraham departing from his people and Abraham did not hesitate in obeying in chapter 22 he demanded sacrifice of Isaac and, God, and Abraham did not hesitate in doing that and so Abraham became wealthy God made him rich and uh, he became wealthy but you look at uh, another man called Lord Lord walked with God, but at a point in his life, he couldn't continue to allow God to have his way. A case come up. The case of the headsman. Now Abraham allowed God to have his way, but Lord will not allow God to have his way. And we saw how he ended. He was making progress. He was enjoying God. The hand of God was upon him as long as uh, he was obeying and following and uh, letting God to have his way. But at this point, he couldn't continue to obey. He decided to choose his own way. And that was where the journey into crisis and trouble began. That was where the journey to loss of integrity and righteousness began. And so, we have also Jacob in the list of those who allow God to have his way. But before he allowed God to have his way, there was uh, an argument. He argued with God. He struggled with God. He struggled with God. He was plotting. He was scheming. He was gambling and using his human senses and would not allow God to have his way until that night of wrestling. After he had wrestled with uh, an angel, he surrendered. He said, God, you cannot have your way. It was from that time he began to see light in the tunnel. It was from that time the promises of God started unfolding in his life and manifesting. Are you with me? We also have Isaac. Isaac was uh, is also in the list of those who allowed God to have his way. In Genesis chapter 26, he had already concluded his plan to depart out of the place where he was because things were not working the way he had been. However, the Lord came and said, you don't do that. Stay here and I will bless you. And uh, what did he do? He surrendered. He unpacked the things he had packed and then and stayed. He allowed God to have his way. If you look at that art, you can see Trusting, you can see obeying because that same year, that land that 
He had cultivated all these years and he had no result. He went back and cultivated that same land in the obedience to God and faith in God. And then, and he had great harvest. From that point, that man began to work strong and move forward. There is no moving forward for anybody who is not trusting the Lord, who is not obeying the Lord, and who is not allowing him to have his way. Look at Genesis chapter 26 and verse 12. And Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the man was great and went forward and grew until he became very great. That man began to experience a way forward. He began to make progress because he had allowed God to have his way. He began to have a headway. Things began to work for him. The labors of his son start yielding result because he allowed God to have his way. Now, it follows that only when we trust, that is when we can obey. And only those who are trusting and who are obeying they are the people that will let God have his way. They are the people that will allow God to have a say in their lives. And listen to me and what they do. And these are the people that will have access to the blessings of God. If God has no say in your life. If God is not dictating your life. If God is not calling short in your life. If not, God is not telling you when to sleep, when to wake. When to sit down, when to go up, where to walk, what not to walk, when to eat, when not to eat. If God is not allowed to dictate your life this way, you will make progress, but not as you expected. Your progress will be limited. That's why we find people in the house of God. This other person is progressing very well in every area of his life. While the other person is just having a little progress, that little progress is dependent on how far you have allowed God to rule your life. If God is uh, ruling your life totally, then he will make all things to come under your rule. If God is having dominion over your life, he will make you to have dominion over everything. When Adam and Eve moved away from the dominion of God, what God gave them order to to dominate, began to dominate them. What we are afraid of them, they began to fear those things. That's why the Bible says that when our obedience is fulfilled, when God is taking absolute charge of your life, when God is, is and his word is determining the things you do, that is when you will see every other thing obeying you. That is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Let's read verse 6. Chapter 10 and verse 6 of 2 Corinthians. What is he saying? I have in readiness to revenge all disobedience. Having in readiness, being ready to revenge. When will you become ready to attack and revenge? All that have been harassing your life, mesmerizing your life, mesmerizing your body, mesmerizing your economy, mesmerizing everything about you. The only time you can revenge is when your obedience is what? Fulfilled. All the things that are rebelling against your life, all the things that are out of your control, out, all the things that you don't know how to have handle them, all the things you cannot explain that are happening in your life, your economy, your body, you don't know what is happening now. If you want them to come under your control, then you must come under the total control of God's word. You must allow him to have his way in your life. Now, it follows that Apostle Paul also is among the least of the people who, at the point, allowed God to have his way in their life. Apostle Paul was a religious uh, uh, biased man. 
He was a religious fanatic and very injurious. But when he met God, he surrendered totally. When he met God, there was no longer struggle. When he met God, he allowed God to have a total control of his life. And that was why he succeeded. Apostle Peter, James, John, Matthew, and others also allowed God, allowed God to have his way. In Matthew chapter 4, when Peter met with Christ, Jesus said, follow me, I will make you. The sons of Zebedee, follow me, I will make you. And the Bible said they forsook their father. They forsook all to follow Jesus. They allowed him to have his way. They allowed him to control their life. They were businessmen, fishers of men, but now he it took them out of fishing. At the point when they went back to what Jesus took them out of, what did they meet? They met frustration. Listen to me. Anybody that will refuse God having his way in his life, dictating for you what to do, the person will be experiencing frustrations in life. Frustration in marriage, frustration in business, frustration in what you do. If you marry who God says you shouldn't marry, you emit frustration. If you are doing business and God says this is not for you, you will meet frustration. If you are worshipping where God says you shouldn't worship, you will have frustration in life. That is the truth of God. When Peter moved out with the other seven into going to a fishing, they were frustrated that night. Am I right? Yes. And so, in, you will now be asking, Pastor, what do you mean by letting God to have his way? Let me explain it in the words of Jeremiah. Chapter 18. Let's see the picture of uh, the, the, the clear picture of the, the lifestyle and the way of a man that has allowed God to have his way in his life. Jeremiah chapter 18. I want to read from verse 1. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house. And there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels, and the vessels that he made of clay was marred, was destroyed, was disfigured in the hand of the potter. So he made it again, another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, Cannot I do with you as this potter? Say the Lord. Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. Did you get the picture? The Lord said unto Jeremiah, Go down to the potter's house to teach you how people of Israel should follow me, how they should relate with me. And then he went down. And then he saw why the potter was trying to make his, uh, his uh, pots and all that. He took up one of them in the course of uh, the making one of them point in his hand. And then he decided to make it another. And he saw that the clay was not struggling in the hands of uh, the potter. That is uh, what it means to let God have his way. That is what it means to have total surrenderedness. That is the meaning of total yieldedness. That is the meaning of uh, letting God have his way. Here, the potter made the what seemed good to him. He said, dear, he said to these children of Israel, he said, can't I, verse 6, O house of Israel, Cannot I do with you as this potter? When God begins to do with you, as this potter did with the clay, that is when you can claim to have let him this way. 
When God begin to do with your life, when God begin to run your life, dictate your life, control your life, tell you what to do in everything, guide you by his word, every step you are taking is ordered and guided and directed by God's word. Then that is when he is having his way. And that is when he can make you. Now if they claim that man was struggling with the potter, that care, clear wouldn't have been made. The clear was made out another time because there was no struggling, there was no argument, there was no, there was no headache given to the potter. The potter, at his own will, at his own desire, as it seemed good to him, was uh, ma making it until he got what in mind, what he had in mind. There is what God has in mind in making you. Until you release yourself to him, he cannot make you that. Listen to me, no man wakes up to become a man of God. No man wakes up to achieve and fulfill God's purpose for his life. But you are ready to him. When you allow him and he begins to, he begins to use you in the course of he uh, uh, making you, he can take you to where you don't like, he can direct you to where you don't like, but at the end of uh, all the tumbling and this and that, he will, he will come out that thing that he God has in mind. And everything about you will be fulfilled. Look at Joseph, another example of a man that allowed God to have his way. When the troubles came, God allowed it. And then and you saw how he came out at the end, a great man. Look at Daniel, look at Mordecai and the rest of them. And so if we let God have his way, he will let us have our way. And so you have seen the meaning. The meaning of letting God have his way is that you allow him to decide, you allow him to control, you allow him to dictate what you should do, what you should not do, and what you should do with your money. God is the one that will tell you what you should do with your money. What you do with your, your first fruit. What you will do with your tithe. He tells you, if the Bible is there. The Bible is there telling us what we should do. Are you listening? And it is only those who are following God the way this Claire followed the potter that we can guarantee they are being made. We can guarantee their success. Because you cannot tell me that there is anything that can take what God is making from his hand and destroy it. Jesus said, my father that gave them to me is stronger than all. And none will be able to pluck them out of what? My father's hand. What, is the, what are they in the father's hand? God, they are in his hand. He's making them. He's molding them. He's bending them this way, that way, to achieve what he had in his mind. Until you come to that level of relationship with God, you have not started. Until you come to that relationship with God, you are not yet ready to be mad. And so, it also means to allow God to have his way means that you stop arguing with God. You stop arguing with God. Meaning, you also go do what you ask you to do. Whatsoever I ask you to do, you go do it. And you do it the way he wants it to be done. In John 2, Mary said unto the servants in the wedding, Whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. And Jesus said to them, Go and fill the thickens with water. And they filled it. After a while he said, Go and serve it and they served it. That was how the miracle came. There was no argument. They allowed him to have his way. Now look at Peter. How did the miracle that turned the wasted long night of Peter to read your Bible, every place that God gave instruction and the people obeyed, there was what? Result. And therefore, if you are not having result, don't brush it aside. Don't conclude that, well, God does not answer again. He does not so. 
He has not answered. He has not attended unto your matter because there is a missing link. Something is missing. Find out what is missing and address it. As long as what is missing remains missing, the flow cannot happen. Now listen to me. This morning, when we were start, they started the gen search. And after a while, what the whole light went off. And then and they rushed down to see what was happening. Then I, after, I waited for them to give me a report. And they did it. I have to send somebody to call uh, one of their brothers. What is happening? He said that the pipe connecting the thing to, to, the, to the diesel, the supply, did what? Went off. Pulled out. Now the pipe pulled out and the supply stopped. And then and the light went off. Now what they did, they had to connect it back. And they connected it back. Then do one or two things and started. And the thing is what is having us now. Now as long as the pipe remains disconnected, the, that generator cannot start. What I said. To connect it so if that thing that has been missing in your relationship with God since you came into this church and has been the barrier between you and answer to your blessings and to your prayers, barrier between you and your blessings and your miracles, as long as they remain disconnected and you have refused to allow them to be connected, what happened last year will happen this year. What happened previously will continue to happen. Listen to me. Things that don't change by time. It's not a matter of time. Sometimes they will tell you, well, it is a matter of time. Things will change. No, it's not about a matter of time. If you want change to take place, you need to look at your life and look at the areas that you want the change to occur. Is that clear? That should be clear to you. And so, it follows what then happens when we let God have his way. When we let God have his way, he will bless us. He will build us. He will protect us. Abraham became Abraham. If Abraham, Abraham means Abraham means a single man, a father. But Abraham that was added name later, father of nation, he became a father. Before Abraham was a father. But that ham now means father of what? Nation. Now it was the obedience of Abraham that brought about that becoming a father of many nations and a friend of God. He allowed God to have his way and all the promises of God came to be fulfilled in his life after he had waited patiently. Take note, all the promises of God came to pass after he had what? Waited patiently and he obtained by faith. Though God has given the promise, he needed to wait and he needed to wait in faith. As long as faith was missing, the waiting will continue. As long as obedience was missing, the waiting will continue. The promise is the promise of love. But you cannot have it. Love cannot, though God loves you so much, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Is that the end? That whosoever believeth, love did not come that belief. If there is no belief, the love is there, but you cannot benefit from the law. So if there is no faith, if there is no obedience, as long as those missing things continue to miss in your life, the connection, the thing you are to be connected to, you can't enjoy it. So, yourself, truth. Make up your mind that in this 2019, you will preach to yourself. You will tell yourself truth, conk truth, raw truth. Not argue with God. Tell yourself the truth. And so he will build, he will bless. He will protect. He did it. He, he will answer your prayer. When Isaac wanted to go down to Egypt, but the Lord said, don't be it. And Isaac obeyed. God had his way. And then, and 
Isaac was blessed. Things started working. When we allow God to have his way, he will make us to be what he wants us to be. He will bless us. He will make us to succeed. When we allow God to have his way, he will make us like he made Peter and those unassuming fishermen. He will change our story. He will change our life. The story of Peter was changed because he allowed God to have his way. And every man that said, allow God to have his way had his story changed. The woman of Samaria, that woman of Samaria, the Samaritan woman that was living in sin, uh, she continued arguing and arguing with Christ until she allowed God to have her way, his way rather, in her life. When God had his way in her life, she became a great in their lives. And uh, 